In this video, we're going to go over the Lab 11 class data analysis. So, we got a few things here. We got the completed data set. Uh, we're going to go ahead and first do the absolute errors. Um, so, equals to ABS. This is for the fast. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, fast. It again doesn't matter the order. Just make sure you select the correct one. And down for that. And we can't drag over directly because we have these mean SRV times in between each. So equals to ABS. Now we're doing the normal. K, yep, I3, oops, and K3, good. Double click, and lastly, our slope. All right, cool. So our first question here has us calculate and report SRV mean, SRV SD, and SRV CV, that coefficient of variation, for all trial conditions. Um, so it's, we're going to use SR, mean SRV time for that. So average. We're just going to average all 10, 10 subjects. Um, mean SRV time. Okay, that gives us that. Now we're going to do this standard deviation of the sample. And lastly, we're going to do the coefficient of variation, which is the standard, standard deviation divided by the mean. And this just tells us how much dispersion, how much um, the standard deviation deviates from, how big, how big is the standard deviation from the mean. Uh, so this is pretty pretty small. Um, so like if it was equal to this, that'd be you know rather large. That mean we'd have a lot of dispersion. That doesn't happen so much with smaller numbers like this, especially because this sort of goes closer and closer to zero. Um, but still, again we can copy that, paste, paste. Make sure you're lined up on the SRV times when you're pasting. Cool. So that's all six. Um, so this isn't lined up exactly to copy and paste just just perfectly, but uh, let's double check. I don't think we can. No. Okay. Didn't think so. So we can copy these one at a time on in. And, eh, yeah, that's, well, um, let's uh, clean these up just a bit so there's less, uh, less digits. Make it three, yeah, three digits of work. So we can see that the metronomic walking and the unconstrained yeah, kind of, kind of similar. The unconstrained, like this standard deviation, pretty small in comparison to all of them. This one's about the same as the metronomic, and this one's a little bit. It's still pretty close, pretty close though. But yeah, we can go ahead and just copy these on in, or if we really want to just move these on down like so. Copy. This one would be normal. Okay, sorry. Oops, overwrite cells. There we go. But we can just do something akin to this and make it a little bit simpler. I'm not going to do all of them. You can do that yourself. Um, but this gets us... <laughs> 
pretty close to what we want. Um, then we're going to do mean standard deviation for the Shannon entropy. Okay, I'm just going to go down here, average. and also standard deviation.s okay oops there we go copy paste 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 and lastly paste i can double check that this is pointing to the correct things yep e3 e12 yep g12 G3, yep, and so on, we're good. So, can then, actually I'm going to reduce these to three, three digits, and then same thing, you can copy, paste, copy, paste, and so on. I'm not going to do all of them. All right. So that takes care of that. We've got our mean standard deviation and so on. Just make sure you po post them or paste them to the correct ones. So it looks like 4.8 versus um, 5.238. 4.8. Eight three five point eight three five point five or six. Okay, so we might have something here. Standard deviations are um, not very very large or anything like that. So there might be something here um, that kind of tells us right off the bat. However, let's go ahead and create some box and whiskers. We'll do it very similar to how we did before. Paste the values. Eh. No, don't don't like. There we go. Yeah, I just rather not have to deal with all those digits again. Okay, so this is M fast. This is SRV time. Yeah, mean SRV time. Okay. And then we got Shannon Entropy. Copy paste M norm. And then M slow. Actually, I'm going to move these. I'm going to line up the fasts together, actually. Fast and norms and all that. So this is U fast. This is going to be a little bit easier to look at. Um, delete these. Okay. So now we have our normal. Double check. Okay, yeah. I was just making sure I double I highlighted the correct ones. Okay, now this is U normal, U norm, and now we'll bring in. That's okay. There we go. And now the slow. U slow. Again, when I make my graph, this is going to make everything line up nicely right next to each other. Okay, so now we can go ahead and create our box and whisker. Cool, so let's make the axes a little bit tighter. Alright, so U fast, M fast. You may not see something there just because these are really close. M norm, U norm, kind of the same thing and same for the U slow, M slow. Uh, actually, never mind. Never mind. What am I saying? 
where what we're saying here is these are very similar. They look very similar in terms of time. You do have a little outlier here, kind of looks like, but these look the same in terms of their mean walking time, the time stri the stride variability time. Sorry, the stride variability is very very similar. Similar amount of dispersion. We have a outlier here, outlier here, but it's very very similar. So this is mean SRV time, and it's in seconds, and we'll do the other one now, Shannon Entropy for number four. Okay, well, we'll do the same thing here see about four I recall was good okay yeah that's good we'll go to 8.5 on the high just make it a little bit tighter a little bit easier to look at okay so just basically kind of going off of this without um, looking too deep into everything Looks like we are kind of close for the M fast versus U fast. There might be something there. Looks like the normal, we should see something. These are pretty, the boxes don't overlap. And we see just a little bit of box overlap here. So we may not have anything in the slow or the fast, but it uh, looks like we might have something in the norm. So we'll, we'll take a look at that. Um, we're going to do a ANOVA single factor between all six test conditions. So we're going to have to actually have to get this stuff into a, um, not on here, we'll have to get it into a separate little area. So this is our M fast. M norm. We've done a couple of these, so kind of routine now. We haven't done one in a little bit, but kind of feels routine at this point. And we're nearing the end of the semester, so I hope something feels a little routine. And fast, or sorry, you fast, you fast. And then you norm. And lastly, you slow, unconstrained slow. Okay, double checking got a lot of digits there all right so we're going to do an ANOVA single factor based on all six test conditions basically we're saying are there any differences in Shannon entropy among all test conditions is there a difference somewhere in there okay let's go to data single factor input range and it's grouped by columns labels in the first row 0 0.05 and we'll call this the ANOVA cool so we've got all this stuff here which we're not too concerned with uh, for what we're doing but we got this and that's a pretty small p-value so it's saying okay there's a difference somewhere in here cool so we can reject that null hypothesis that there you know wouldn't be any difference that there is no difference amongst all these and we're gonna be and regardless we'd still move on with these post hoc comparisons but um, We'll only look at three specific comparisons, which is just M fast versus U fast, M norm versus U norm, M slow versus U slow. There could be a bunch of other ones like M fast versus uh, M norm or U norm and, and whatnot, but we're just comparing the metronomic versus the unconstrained, and that's it. Okay, so our next one we're going to be looking at is M fast versus U fast, and we're doing a two sample t test assuming equal variances okay
we'll keep the variable names in there m fast u fast hypothesize mean difference will go to zero labels I'm just going to call this fast because we're only doing fast norm and slow so I can just call this fast okay so one oh wait one thing that's this is my, th my uh, one thing I forgot um, I'm actually going to delete this this won't change much we're going to redo that and the reason being we have to correct alpha level correction since we're doing multiple comparisons in here so this actually won't change anything uh, in terms of what we're using but we'll we'll do it anyway uh, the only thing it actually changes is this T critical um, but still based on this we cannot reject the null hypothesis we're, you know if it was if it was 0 0.05 we would be able to reject it again that changing that number that I just changed on there did not actually change this p-value uh, so we would still reject it regard uh, not be able to reject it regardless we would still um, fail to reject but uh, still it, it is good just to make sure that we have that in there these variances are very very close so that's that's good um, we're close but we we did fail to reject now let's do the normal U norm and now uh, normal okay so we did we are able to reject the null hypothesis because this is less than 0 0.01667 cool so normal we could and I kinda said we'd probably be able to based off of how the data looked and lastly let's do the U slow alright okay so we failed to reject this one as well like on the fast again the, both the fast and the slow were kinda like that based off of this chart that I was look I, that we made it was like you know kinda close it's right there almost so still failed to reject the variance looks fine this isn't it's kind of large but it's not outside the norm I mean, not outside the norm outside of what we um, we wouldn't be able to assume equal variances um, so we're good there um, now let's go ahead and do the Cohen's D for all of these so equals to absolute value this minus that divided by the square root of the pulled variance. So that's a rather large Cohen's D. And we were on D8. Double checking. Okay, that's even larger. And this one's about the same as the slow. Okay. So it kind of looks like, you know, we got more more subjects. We only had 10 and we had several conditions. You know, we might have uh, be able to use this and say you know between the slow the fast and the normal we'd be able to reject, reject all three probably um, so there's and based on the Cohen's D it looks like there's something there but we're not allowed to say that there is a difference for the slow and the fast we are for the normal though and it's a very large difference um, so that's that's good to see good to see there um, Now let's take a look at the experimental error, absolute error. We need the means, so equals to average. So we got those. You can copy and paste that on in here. Make it look a little purty.
cool. All right, so just just kind of wrapping up on this. Um, again, it kind of it looks for like looks like for the norm we had a decrease in the amount of information of the signal, and it looks like the the metronome it kind of we can't definitively say for the slow and the fast that there is, but it looks like there is it's kind of going that way where the, there was a decrease in the amount of information um, when we had the metronomic walking. Um, definitely we can say for the normal, can't say for the other conditions, but definitely was for the norm. And again, that's just comparing um, the Shannon entropy, I didn't title this, but Shannon and okay, I didn't want to copy and paste that on in. Um, okay, <laughs> um, but that is also despite that the mean s stride rate variability time between the two conditions are very, very, very similar. You can just look at it based off the chart. We did have an outlier, outlier, but still, this looks pretty interesting in terms of what we got. Cannot definitively say for the slow and the fast but we did have large effects for them regardless. Can't say it's different, but there is a large effect that there might be something there if we collected more data. So, I'll leave it at that. There's a lot of information, good, great information here though, a lot of interesting stuff. If you do have any questions, please feel free to contact your instructor or myself, and if not, I'll see you in the next video.